Hi, welcome to my system here, Linux Mint Mate system. You wouldn't say, but it is. Trust me. I'm gonna install some stuff for you uh, at the same time. I'm gonna show you what's the, the intention of the tutorial. First, um, see how i3 works, and let's install um, a screen key, a little program, so you see what uh, keys I'm touching. Uh, what it is because it's a keyboard-driven system here, i3. And we have installed a new Compton.com file, so we'll see how that goes and go into the details of this Compton.conf, what I did change. So, in order for you to follow what I do, I have this little program that I have on GitHub installation. Um, well, let's see, it's not here. It's, of course, in the Ultimate Linux Mint 18.1 sentiment. This is my home my base of operations install screen key that's the one i want right mouse click open in terminal we get a new terminal which i'm gonna pimp here because i don't like it let's see it again i wanna pimp it <laughs> install screen key so i'm gonna oops i'm gonna install there's also screen fetch so that's why i didn't know what to do that's the wrong password eric it's quite cold my fingers are a bit stiff so, screen key, a little program that's now not started yet. Windows D, you don't see what I press, but you'll see it now, like so. So this is our little program. I have installed it from scratch, so I'm gonna use this one, and I think it's far too slow, so I have to type a lot faster. So, one second. When I press now uh, keys, what did I press? Windows D. Now you see Super T. So you know what I do when I, well, explain stuff. For instance, I want to get rid of this screen here. We can move over. So the effect you see is a Compton Conf effect. When it's not active, it's dimmed by a certain percentage. And that's what's happening here. So when you hover over the active one, you can do Windows Shift Q, Super Shift Q, and there you go. The Windows has been quit, and the Q for quit, that's why I took that one. I think the original one in i3 is A, but like, yeah, I have an Azerte, Azerte, so it's Q. Okay, so um, what, what else? So this fade in, fade out effect is actually one from Compton. This menu that's a bit transparent is coming from Compton. So, hmm. Maybe we should take a look at the file. So the Compton file is this one. We've made a copy paste. This was my original one and this was my new one. Double clicking doesn't do a thing, but yes it does. But I have told in my com the config file of i3 to go to Sublime Text. This is Sublime Text and to show me it on Workspace 2. So here we see that we want shadows and we don't want shadows for docks and panels and all that. How big a shadow you want? Let's take an, uh, another. Let's do Windows Return. Let's take a, a one that's a little bit lighter. You see the shadow coming up more and more, but we need something more bright. And here you see that there is a wallpaper and a uh, shadow between these two windows and their shadow. So this is the number 15 uh, that I've chosen. You can put other uh, figures there. And what happened in the other tutorial is that the shadow was still red. So now it's black again and um, just the way I want it. If by, for instance, there is a conkey coming in your system, then you will not have exclude. You will not have a shadow. Neither will the notify OSD, the, the thing that changes your um, Spotify songs, that shows you this song is playing, or that shows that the network is connected or disconnected. So that's a notify on screen display. And opacity of the menu. So how opaque do you want it? It was set to 0 0.8. I found it a bit too much. I couldn't read it anymore. So that's 0.9 for me. And then the frame opacity as well depends. The frame opacity is normally this one, but since we're in i3, we don't have the one on the top. So that's uh, not active here. 
and the alpha step this is the one that makes you dim it if we delete this one windows shift q it's gonna go a bit faster a bit slower this is fading in fading out like so fading in fading out back to the config and let's get rid of this one so inactive dim do how much do you want it to dim if we move from one to the other i think it was zero two i've added i've changed to zero three and i do think that's that's about it no 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 i don't think so the fading in and the fading out the fade delta i've um, activated that one so the fading is here and this is opacity but there's also dimming so it's a bit trial and error just um, change the numbers and see what happens and mostly i change it extremely so i mean it says inactive dim 0.2 i take 0.8 because one is the maximum and see what happens then it's uh, quite obvious what changes and all the rest i've just yeah i let it be so these are my content com files at the moment uh, things will change of course i will get uh, grow tired of the settings and then change it again so what you do if you don't like any shadows anymore just put hashtag in front and there you go next time you reboot so we have to windows shift tick exit and then when you exit well you get back to your mdm in my case linux mint uh, otherwise it's a gdm or anything else and then you log back in and the content file will be read again and applied so no shadows so that's it um, in the meantime you saw me moving around how things work in uh, i3 what else can i give from tips so we have here 10 workspaces we can start elements by um, pressing keyboard keys windows d being the most important if you installed d menu then you have the ability to look for a program like firefox enter it and then firefox i told it to open in workspace one there is already a workspace one in there so it's only going to open another one what also interesting is maybe you want to read this even a little bit more than this one what you do is windows f and super f so we have now a full screen and then sometimes you say wow how can i get back it's the same button again and then we have uh, zoomed in zoomed out something like that full screen and i've put it on windows f all right so um that's interesting to know now i'm thinking about tips to to share here anything that i'm explaining anything that i'm explaining is of course where windows shift enter super shift i open my nemo anything that you have to learn and have to know is inside config file so here are all the shortcuts here is everything you need to know there are there are moments that you can skip the manual and say whatever i'll figure it out in this case that's not true read i3 configuration find out what's happening in here and change things around if you don't like the shortcut like here mod f4 is going to execute gimp so windows f4 is going to run it so you need to know these little things windows f3 is another one i'm gonna need a lot for the satellite icons so inkscape windows shift q bye bye back to four here as you can see windows shift q finished so i'm i'm loving i3 i know um, i've lot, made a lot of articles about i3 on eric .be, a lot of tutorials how to change this status bar how to change the color the icons maybe that's also a nice tip alex appearance change any of these icons here the mouse cursor breeze no icon theme change it around the fonts but not here um, so a lot of elements can be uh, can be changed everything works sound bluetooth the updates uh, variety it's a nice wallpaper actually but we can change it again by going over here and voila 
that's it. Um, <clears throat> anything else? I've divided my programs, my applications to workspaces. I am now on one terminal. Actually, I'm on dual monitors. So one to five is on the left and six to 10 is on the right, which is the power of the system, I feel. I have the feeling I have 10 uh, monitors available, which is, is great. Um, and like I said, well, do check out some tutorials and I believe you will enjoy it because, and that's also one of the major advantage, if you know it, you can apply it on any of your distros. So it doesn't matter, um, on Tergos i3, it's there, Arch i3, it's there. So whatever a distro you like and like best, you can always go to i3 and test it out. Have fun on Linux.